dear brothers and sisters, as I present this message today, we remember 1844, the investigative judgment on the 22nd of October, 1844. We remember Yom Kippur in the most holy place in heaven. The Lord Jesus mediating, praying for us. And as we remember that very important date, there is a war taking place in Israel between Israel and Hamas. And it's interesting because this war is religious. It is a religious war between the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Islam. But it is a bigger war, it's a conflict between the king of the north, the papal power, and the king of the south, Islam. And we will read and study these scriptures, these prophecies from Daniel chapter 11 in relation to the current events taking place. Let us first have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us with the visions given to Daniel, with the prophecies given to Daniel, that now we see its fulfillment. We pray for your blessing as we study this topic today. We pray in the name of your Lord Jesus. Amen. In this news we read, Israel vows to punish Gaza as region and the world feel ripples from Hamas attack. Many people protesting all over the world because of this war. And yet this is a religious war. Will the Jewish people finally achieve their goal of building their temple on the Temple Mount? If they achieve their, that goal, they will have to make other arrangements for them to build the temple in the place where the, where the Islamic people, where the Muslims have built their mosque that is for many centuries already in that place where Solomon had built the first temple. So this is a religious war, they say, Hamas calls upon Muslims to participate in holy war on the 13th of October. This is a holy war because they are protecting their place of worship, the sacred site of worship, the mosque of Al-Assad. It says this in Daniel chapter 11, verse 14. This is a prophecy in relations to the king of the north and the king of the south. The king of the north, the papacy, and the king of the south, Islam, fighting over centuries to establish their headquarters in Jerusalem, to build their temple of religious ceremonies of their religion on the Temple Mount. And this is a battle, this is a war. And this is a prophecy in regards to the religion of Ishmael, the son of Abraham. It says in Daniel chapter 11, verse 14, and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. We will see that the king of the south is Islam. Many shall stand against the king of the south, also the robbers of thy people shall exhort themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. Let the Bible be its own interpreter. Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, unto who? Unto Hagar, the servant of Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, behold, thou art with child and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. This is Ishmael, the son of Abraham. He was a Sabbath keeper. 
he was a true worshiper of the God of Abraham, Ishmael. And they were outcasts and they returned to Egypt. And it was in Egypt that Ishmael grew up. In Egypt, as a country, they have a state, uh, a region called by the name Ishmael. That's where the religion of Islam has its roots and origins. And this verse in Genesis chapter 16, verse 12, we read, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And this is the explanation of the vision in Daniel chapter 11, verse 14, that the king of the south will be against all nations and all nations against the king of the south. This is Ishmael. And this news we read, why has the, has the West turned against Islam? Remember, all nations have been fighting against Islam since September 11, the collapsing of the two towers in New York. And this paper, because of the war taking place between Israel and Hamas, between Israel, in Gaza, it says, anxiety and fear are high. United States Palestinians, Muslims, fear to return to post 9-11 Islamophobia, where all nations against Ishmael, all nations against Islam. And this paper says, U US legacy of Islamophobia globalized, exported after 9-11 attacks. Remember the Muslims were blamed for the collapsing of the two towers in New York. And now they are being blamed by the war for the, because of the war taking place in Israel and Gaza. But this war is a religious war between two kingdoms, between the papacy and Islam to maintain control of the city of Jerusalem and to establish their temple or their temples in Jerusalem. This has been a religious war over the centuries. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 11, we read, and the king of the south shall be moved with color and shall come forth and fight with him. With who? With the king of the north. This is the king of the south, Islam, against the king of the north, the papacy, and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north, and shall set forth a great multitude. But the multitude shall be given into his hand. These are, this is the prophecy in regards to the crusades. The crusades, the papal war, battles against Islam for conquering Jerusalem. So the Crusades, the war for the Holy Land. This is even in the news. Everybody knows that the Crusades were, I, uh, were battles against Islam. And these battles were done, originated, planned by the papacy and by the European armies. This is a paper from Islam, from Muslim, Muslim times. It says the Crusades, Crescent and the Cross, History Channel documentary. And this is what this Muslim newspaper says, the Crusades, Crescent and the Cross, presents the epic battle between two Middle Ages superpowers the Christian crusaders, this is the Roman Catholic crusaders, and the Muslims. They fought over two centuries. The conflict was decided, and the conflict decided the fate of the Holy Land, of the Middle East. Only a tiny strip of land 
just a few hundred miles long, but it contained the ultimate prize, the city of Jerusalem. So this is a battle between the king of the north and the king of the south contending for the city of Jerusalem. They wanted to establish their headquarters of their religion on the Temple Mount, on the very place where Solomon Temple was built, on the very place where the Jewish nation want to build their third temple. And this is a battle. And this is the beginning of the Crusades. And then in Daniel chapter 11, verse, verse 13, we read, for the king of the north shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former. This is the continuation of the Crusades and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. So this is the history of the Roman Catholic papacy against Islam. And this paper says why Al-Aqsa Mosque is important in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Why is it important? Because the Jewish people want to build their temple in that very place. And that's why this war is taking place, but this war has been organized, not just by Israel, it's a religious war that has been organized by the papal power. Why? Because they want to establish their temples, their tabernacles in that very place where the Jewish nation wants also to build their temple. And this paper says the Al-Aqsa Mosque located in the old city of Jerusalem holds immense significance in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Its importance is rooted in both religious and geopolitical dimensions. That's why this war is a religious war, not just geopolitical. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 15, we read, so the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount and take the most fenced cities and the arms of the south shall not withstand, neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. And it's interesting because it continues in verse 16, it says, but he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will and none shall stand before him and he shall stand in the glorious land which by his hand shall be consumed. He shall stand in the glorious holy land. Who? Islam. They built, according to their own will, they built the mosque on the Temple Mount. And this, we will study this. this they had an agreement with the papacy that they were going to control, to take over, to take control, to conquer Jerusalem for the papacy. But instead of giving the control, the full command, full control to the papacy, the Muslims built their own temple on the Temple Mount. They acted according to their own will, not according to the, to the agreement that they had made beforehand. And that's why the Crusades took, took place in order for the papal power to regain control of Jerusalem. This paper says, Dome of the Rock, Religious Significance, History and Architecture. The Dome of the Rock uh, is, uh, is, the, is the mosque of the Muslims and it was built in the year 691. This is the oldest Islamic building in the whole world. That's a very important uh, information. So why Al-Aqsa, this is the mosque, uh, Al-Aqsa remains a sensitive site in this Palestine-Israel conflict because they want to regain 
control. The Jewish people want to, to regain control of the Temple Mount so that they will build their own temple. And this paper says why the Palestinian group Hamas launched an attack on Israel. All to know, it says Hamas spokesperson Khaled Kadomi has told Al Jazeera that the group's, group's military operation is in response to all the atrocities the Palestinians have faced over the, the decades. And then he says, we want the international community to stop atrocities in Gaza against Palestinian people, our holy sites like Al-Aqsa. All these things are the reason behind starting this battle, he said. But we will see that there is more. There is another reason. There, this is a planned war by the Vatican. This is a planned war of all three religions. Remember, all three religions are walking together. Islam, the Catholics, and the, and the Jewish people, they are walking together and they are working to attain global peace. And they want this place, Jerusalem, to be the headquarters for the global peace. And they are united. But this war is for the purpose of bringing all Arab nations in harmony with Israel before they do what they, what they need to do. They want to build a temple on that place. This paper says Israeli researcher proposes new explanation as to why the Dome of the Rock was built on Temple Mount. He says it has dominated the Jerusalem skyline for 1,300 years, but there is no single accepted explanation for why it was built. They say there is no single accepted explanation why the mosque of the Muslims was built. But the Bible gives us the, the explanation. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 8, it says, and shall also carry captives into Egypt, their gods, their princes, and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold, and he shall continue more years than the king of the north. He shall continue more years than the king of the north. What and who will continue more years than the king of the north? The mosque that was built by the Muslims. Islam on the Temple Mount shall continue more years than the king of the north. How many years already? 1,300 years of build, since the, the mosque Al-Aqsa was built on Temple Mount. But the papacy want to build their own temple, their own tabernacle, and we will see this very shortly because this is a prophecy that the Muslim the Muslims will continue more years, the kingdom of, of Islam, the king of the south will continue more years occupying the Temple Mount. But the papacy will occupy also that Temple Mount. They want to build their own temple also. And this prophecy infers that the king of the north, the papal, the papal power will also establish their headquarters in that very place where the Jewish nation want to build their temple. This is a paper, Alberto Rivera. Alberto Rivera was an ex Jesuit and he, he wrote a series of magazines. One of them is called The Prophets. In that magazine, he explains how Islam was created by the Vatican. And this paper says how the Vatican created Islam. And he says, what I'm going to tell you is what I learned in secret briefings in the Vatican when I was a Jesuit priest. Under oath and induction, a Jesuit cardinal named Augustine Bea showed us how desperately 
the Roman Catholics wanted Jerusalem at the end of the third century because of its religious history and its strategic location, the holy city was considered a priceless, priceless treasure. A scheme had to be developed to make Jerusalem a Roman Catholic city. What's great, what scheme? They recruited people from the Arab nations and they organized um, the, the religion of Islam. This is what he gives the testimony, how they were inducted by the cardinal, Jew, uh, Jesuit cardinal. And there are there is evidence that the Muslims venerate Roman Catholicism. They venerate Mary. They, they also venerate the Roman Catholic figures like in this case, Augustine. And this paper says Augustine's writings on forced conversion, origins of Calvinism and Islam. So they know that Islam has been originated by the writings of Augustine. Augustine was also the originator. He was the mastermind of the Roman Catholic Inquisition, the great persecution against the Christians and how Roman Catholicism become, became a, a great power. That's why he's called the King of the North because he's a kingdom on the whole earth. And it was by, by forced conversion. Roman Catholicism has been a religion that has always used force to convert. And it says this paper that Islam is also originated from the writings of Augustine, and they call him Saint Augustine. And this other paper says Saint Augustine did build a bridge from Christian tradition to Islam. And you can read the whole article. And this paper in Christianity Today, they say cinema of God, Muslims memorialize Augustine. North African nations bring church father to the silver screen. Yes, the North African nations have been screening the movie uh, in regards to Augustine. And this other paper, this is from Roman Catholic newspaper. It says Christians and Muslims from Algeria to Italy in the footsteps of, of St. Augustine. It says a group of Christians and Muslims from Algeria, Morocco and France have planned a pilgrimage in the footsteps of St. Augustine, their countrymen that will lead them to Milan and Pavia, where the remains of the North African saints of Hippo lie. So this is just evidence that Islam indeed has relations to Roman Catholicism from its beginnings. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 23, we read, and after the league, this is an agreement, after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a, with a small people. How was this prophecy fulfilled? They broke their agreement, and instead of giving full control, of the Temple Mount to the papal power, they established themselves as, as a religion and having Jerusalem as the headquarters and they built the, Isla, the Muslim mosque, al Asak, on Temple Mount. And that's why the Crusades began because the Roman Catholic papacy wanted to regain control of Jerusalem. And it happens when November 27, 1095, Pope Urban II orders the first crusade. And this is interesting because Saint Francis of Assisi, he was also a crusader. And he visited Egypt on the fifth crusade. He says, Saint Francis and the Sultan in the year 
1219, Saint Francis and Brother Illuminato accompanied the armies of Western Europe, Europe to Damietta, Egypt during the Fifth Crusade. So this is the Fifth Crusade and Saint Francis accompanied uh, the Crusaders, the armies of Western Europe, and that took place in the year 1219. And this paper says 800 years before Pope Francis, Saint Francis met the Sultan of Egypt, 800 years. And this paper says Pope Francis undertook his first ever visit to United Arab Emirates following an invitation by the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. So this is in commemoration of what took place between the King of the North and the King of the South 800 years ago. And now the representative of the King of the North, Pope Francis, and the representative of the King of the South, the Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, and they meet together. And this is exactly 800 years after the crusader Francis of Assisi. This paper says Hamas is calling its attack Al-Aqsa flood. Why is the Jerusalem mosque so important in Gaza? This paper says, after Hamas militants invaded Southern Israel and launched a barrage of rockets at Israeli cities in a surprise attack Saturday morning, a Hamas leader named the operation Al-Aqsa flood, saying the attack was in defense of the Aqsa mosque. Yes. This war is a religious war protecting the Al-Aqsa Mosque, protecting the headquarters of the King of the South on the Temple Mount of Jerusalem. And this war was a planned war. This paper says, Israeli settlers stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque complex on the fifth day of Sukkot. It's interesting because the Jewish people came and did religious ceremonies around the area of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This paper says Jewish worshipers pray next to one of the gates to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in the old city of occupied East Jerusalem. And this angered the Muslims. They were very angry. And this paper, this is just three days before this war began. It says, Palestinian Authority calls for international intervention to stop settler attacks on Al-Aqsa Mosque. It says the Palestinian, Palestinian Authority's Ministry of Jerusalem Affairs, as well as Palestinian factions called on Wednesday for international intervention to stop Israeli settler attacks on Al-Aqsa Mosque. So this is a religious war protecting the headquarters of the King of the South, Islam. And then it says, we renew our, our calls for an immediate international, in, international intervention to stop the settler violations provocation and attacks on Al-Aqsa Mosque, said the ministry. At the same time, it called for all parties to respect the historical and legal status quo of the mosque in occupied East Jerusalem, and not to let the extreme far-right Israeli government implement its Judaization plan. What Judaization plan? building of the third temple. That's the plan. This paper says, what does Israel declaration of war mean for Palestinians in Gaza? What does it mean? 
Well, they want global peace. They want all religions together. And this war will cement the fabricated peace. The, it will bring harmony between religions. This war will do that. It's interesting, but they use war to bring harmony and peace. That's why the Bible says, when all shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. So this paper says, want, want world peace? Build the third temple. Do you want world peace? Build the third temple. So what does it mean? This war has, has uh, begun between Israel and Hamas. They want to build the third temple. Why? Because they want to bring harmony between religions. And we will see how they will achieve this. This, uh, this paper says, organization launches campaign to raise funds for draft plans of site, which if built, it says, would usher in universal harmony. They want to build the third temple to bring universal harmony. But what are they doing now? The Israel, Israelite government is destroying Muslim mosques all over Gaza. This paper says Israeli strike flattened buildings, mosques in Gaza. How many? Seven. It says Israeli airstrikes destroy seven Gaza mosques since Saturday. What, they, what do they want? Do they want to build a third temple? They, they can use this war to destroy the Muslim temple on Temple Mount. And that's what the, what the extremist Jewish Israelites want. And this paper says the attacks have now led to the destruction of seven mosques, with the most recent being the Al-Abbas Mosque. And then it's, it gives the names. Israel had previously hit the Al-Susi, Al-Yarmouk, Al-Amin Muhammad, Ahmed Yassin, Al-Habib Muhammad, and Al-Garbi mosques in Gaza. So the government, the Israeli army is destroying Muslim mosques. So this is a, this is a religious war. They are destroying the the sacred temples of Muslims, they are destroying them. Let us continue with the identifying, the identification of the king of the South, Islam. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 18, we read, after this, shall he turn his face unto the islands, unto the isles, and shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to these. Without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. This is a prophecy about the expanding power of Islam. Islam in Indonesia. This is the islands. Remember, the king of the south turns his face unto the isles, unto the islands. How many Muslims in Indonesia? 250 million Muslims. This is the country that has the most, the largest uh, Muslim population in the whole world. Just one country, 250 million Muslims. And Muslims in the islands is also in Malaysia, in the Philippines and other islands around Indonesia. How did Islam, the king of the south, spread? By the year 600, there were no Muslims. By the year 644, the king of the south had already spread to, to the Middle Eastern nations and to the African nation of Egypt. By the year 718, it had ex ex spread to the North African nations and to Europe, Spain and Portugal. Spain and Portugal were, were Muslim 
for a time, and also Southeast Asia. By the year 1491, the King of the South conquered the islands of Indonesia and it continues spreading. And this is in fulfillment of Bible prophecy. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 28, talks about the king of the north on the other hand, because the king of the north could not regain control of the city of Jerusalem. He says, then shall he return into his land with great riches and his heart shall be against the holy covenant and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. How was the papacy against the holy covenant? We read in Daniel chapter 11, verse 31, and arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate, the abomination of desolation. Sunday as a day of worship, trampling upon the law of God and establishing the abomination of desolation, sun, Sunday worship, sun worship through the adoration of the Eucharist. They worship the Eucharist, they worship the sun, and they trample upon the sanctuary of strength. Because remember, the Lord Jesus was sacrificed once and for all, according to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. But in Roman Catholicism, every time they celebrate the mass, they call it the sacrifice of the mass, they sacrifice the Lord Jesus again. They say they, they have the power to sacrifice and to, to transform the wafer bread into the real presence body of Jesus that, had, that has been sacrificed. This is indeed the pollution of the sanctuary. This is indeed taking away the sacrifice. This is the abomination that makes us desolate, establishing sun as a Sunday as a day of worship. In Daniel chapter seven, verse 25 says, and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. This is the prophecy in regards to the king of the north, polluting the sanctuary, persecuting the holy people of God and trampling against the holy covenant, thinking to change the times and the law of God. And this is the purpose. They want Sunday as a day of worship. This is, this is the abomination of desolation. The Roman Catholic power is indeed the abomination of desolation with all the doctrines that are antichrist doctrines. This paper says Sunday, Laudato Si 237 is about Sunday worship for the whole world. Muslims and Jewish also, they will be worshiping by force on Sunday. He says on Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist, this is the abomination of desolation, the Eucharist and Sunday worship together has a special importance. And he says Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves and with others and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, so and so and so and so. But they want Sunday even as the Jewish Sabbath. It's important because Abraham was a Sabbath keeper. Abraham believed in the Lord Jesus also. Remember the Lord Jesus, he swore by his own name when he promised to Abraham that through him, all nations were going to be blessed. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is descended through the genealogy of Abraham. In Genesis chapter two, verses two and three, we read, and this is what Abraham also believed because Adam rested on the seventh day on the Sabbath, even as God himself rested after he created. In verse two, we read, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, 
because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. And it's interesting because Muslims used to worship on the Sabbath, on the seventh day Sabbath, Saturday. The Roman Catholics also, they used to worship on the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, Saturday. Why? Because they were an offshoot from Christianity. They, they came from Christianity. Even as Muslims, they came from Ishmael and Ishmael received the religion of Abraham. And that's why in the Quran, the Muslims have this writing in relations to Saturday as the Sabbath, as the true Sabbath of rest in, in the Quran and, and Misa in verse 154, we read it. It says in the Quran, and we ordered them enter the gate by Tulmakdis while prostrating, enter the gates while prostrating, and we ordered also them do not violate the regulations regarding the Sabbath. And we have taken them from them a firm covenant. This is a covenant to worship on the Sabbath, on the seventh day Sabbath. And this is another verse in Al-Baqarah 65 in the Quran. It says, and indeed you knew who's those among you who committed transgressions among you on the Sabbath. So we said to them, be you the speakable monkeys. They who transgress or who, who commit transgression on the Sabbath, on Saturday, in other versions of the Quran, in Indonesian language, it says Sabtu, which is Saturday on the Sabbath. They are, if they transgress the Sabbath command, they are called the speakable monkeys. And indeed, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, talking about Antichrist, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, verse three, verse four, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. For 1,260 years, the man of sin sat down in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is blasphemy. This is why the Bishop of Rome is called the Antichrist, sitting on, upon the temple of God, sitting upon the church, the Christian church, and trampling upon every precept of the Bible. And this is an, another prophecy in regards to the King of the North, the papacy. This is when Napoleon Bonaparte took the Pope prisoner. And this is also a prophecy in Daniel chapter 11, verse seven. He says, but out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his state, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the King of the North and shall deal against them and shall prevail. Who came into the fortress of the King of the North? Into the Vatican, Napoleon Bonaparte. On February the 10th, 1798, General Berthier, under the command of Napoleon Bonaparte, entered Rome and took prisoner Pope Pius VI. And this is in fulfillment of Daniel chapter 11, verse 7. It says this paper, on Napoleon's bicentenary, remembering his battles in Israel, Napoleon Bonaparte was also a crusader, and he was a Jesuit. 
he was used by the Jesuits to punish the papacy because the papal power, the reigning power of the papacy were the Dominicans, an order of the Roman Catholic Church, and they were struggling against the order of the Jesuits. The Jesuits had been expelled from Europe. And for that reason, the Jesuits used Napoleon Bonaparte to punish the papacy. And they took the Pope prisoner. And this was in direct fulfillment of Daniel chapter 11, verse seven. This paper says, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 29 says, at the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Who? The king of the north coming toward the south. But he is not coming as a crusader. He is coming as a man of peace. And he comes and worships together in the mosque of the Muslims in the, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It says Benedict XVI, the first Pope to visit Al-Aqsa. So he comes, the King of the North, the representative of the King of the North comes, not as a crusader, not as the former times, he comes to, to the South, in this case, because he's coming from the North, but it comes to the Holy Land, what they call the Holy Land in Israel. And this says Pope, places note of peace in Jerusalem's Western Wall. So when the Pope comes, he comes to visit the Jewish nation and the Muslim nation. And this paper says, why did Pope Francis pray at the wall? Why? Because they want to unify Muslims and the Arabs, uh, nations together with Israel. And this paper says, Pope visits the Dome of the Rock and the Western Wall in Jerusalem. They are unifying Islam with the Jewish nation. And this paper says Pope Francis visits third holiest site in Islam, Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. So this is in, in fulfillment of Daniel chapter, chapter 11, that he is coming back to, re, to regain control of the, of the Temple Mount. The, this is the purpose, to regain control of Temple Mount. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 27 says, and both these kings, these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Yes, they had agreements, they had covenants, and it was all mischief and lies, but it did not prosper because when will it have its prosperity? At the time of the end. And the time of the end is right now. The king, the representative of the king of the north, the Pope Francis, and the representative of Islam, they come together. He says, Pope heads to Egypt, to mend ties with Islam. And remember, we will read about Egypt because Egypt is in the prophecy of Daniel chapter 11. Egypt is also a representative of the king of the South of Islam. And this paper says, Pope and Grand Imam sign historic pledge of fraternity in United Arab Emirates. And this is when they formed the leadership, the global leadership of one religion together, two leaders. And this is in representative of the king of the north and the king of the south. And again, this paper, Islam and Christianity, the king of the south and the papacy, the king of the north. And it says, I long complex and crucial relationship. And this other paper, he says, Pope and Moroccan king declared Jerusalem common patrimony of three religions. Once again, the representative of the king of the north, the Pope Francis, and the representative of the king of the south, 
the Moroccan king. And they do what? They declare Jerusalem as patrimony of three religions. So what do they want? They want Jerusalem, not just for Muslims, they want Jerusalem for the Jewish and for the Catholics. They want to establish their tabernacles on the Temple Mount. And this is a very recent news because even as the war is taking place between Israel and Hamas, Gaza, Pope Francis meets with the King of Bahrain, Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa. And this is also representing Pope Francis representing the King of the North and the King of Bahrain representing Islam, the King of the South. And they meet together to talk about the religious war that is taking place in Israel and in, in, in Hamas. It says, Pope Francis meets again with King of Bahrain one year, nearly one year after his apostolic journey, one year after he met for the first time with the King of Bahrain, they meet again and they meet to, to have a chat in regards to the war in Jerusalem. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 25, we read, this is another prophecy. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand for they shall forecast devices against him. And this is a very important information from the Bible because it's a, it is a prophecy in relations to Islam, that within Islam, there would be, there would be a betrayal. The king of the south would be betrayed by their own by their own nation, by one of their by some, by some of their nations. It says, it shall not prevail, it shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. And this is this paper says why Egypt and other Arab countries are unwilling to take in Palestinian refugees from Gaza. This other paper says how Arabs and the West both betrayed Palestine. And this is indeed using the terms that the Bible uses here. They shall be uh, betraying, the king of the south shall be betrayed by its own, by, by its own kingdom. Let us read again, Daniel chapter 11, verse 25. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand. Why? For they shall forecast devices against him. They shall have, they shall have a betrayal. They will be treason. It says this paper, how Arabs and the West both betrayed Palestine. So there was a, there was a betrayal by the Arab nations against Palestine, against Gaza. This paper says Israel, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain have signed agreements to establish formal relations, ending a decades old taboo in Arab diplomacy as power and priorities shift in the Middle East. So what was the betrayal? They signed agreements between the Arab nations, between the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain and Israel. And they say this is the beginning of the war in Hamas. 
And these papers as United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Israel signed historic accords at the White House event. And this accord is called the Abraham Accord. This paper says three years on, how have the Abraham Accords helped the United Arab Emirates? Three years ago, the United States mediated an agreement between the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Israel, promising to normalize ties between these Arab Gulf states and Israel. And this paper says, why Saudi Israel peace will cement a violent future? The Saudi Arabia and Israel, they had a plan to, to have diplomatic relations, to have diplomatic ties, but the process of diplomacy, diplomatic relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel was suspended because of the war. But it's interesting because they do not want only Saudi Arabia, but the whole Arab nations, they want Arabs to make peace with Israel before they can proceed to build their tabernacles, their temples on the Temple Mount. And this is called treason. That's why they say this is a betrayal between within, within the King of the South, within Islam. And we will read from the newspapers because they are saying this is treason, this is betrayal also. And this paper says the United Arab Emirate Israel Accord is a victory for Temple Mount extremists. It's a victory to the Jewish extremists who want to demolish the Al-Aqsa Mosque and have access to the, to the Temple Mount, which they claim as their property. This is the Jewish people. This paper, let us read once again. This paper tells us that within the King of the South, Islam, there will be forecasted devices against him. Forecast device, devices means prison, betrayal. And this paper here says, Gaza is slaughtered. Will Israel's normalization with Arab countries still continue? And this paper says the devil is in the details. Did the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain sell out Al-Aqsa? This is in direct fulfillment of this prophecy, forecasting devices within the king of the south, within the kingdom of Islam. And they say this was a sellout, this was a treason, this was a betrayal. This paper says extremist groups in Israel have long sought access to the Al-Aqsa compound, seeking to build a temple which would likely result in the iconic Dome of the Rock, sacred to Muslims, being demolished. This is what they want. They want to demolish the, the sacred temple of the Muslims, the Dome of the Rock. And they have already begun demolishing, destroying mosques in Gaza, using this war as a pretext. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, we read, and at the time of the end, everything is taking place at the time of the end, even now. And at the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over this is fulfillment also the king of the north the papacy power the papal power is using the united states as the right arm to bring in uh, warships. It says the United States sends warships and fighter jets to support Israel. This is fulfillment of Daniel 11 verse 40. This paper also says more US ships 
head toward Israel and 2,000 troops are on the heightened alert. And it says, I look at United States assistance. This other paper says United States warship in Red Sea intercepts three missiles fired from Yemen, possibly at Israel. It's interesting because Yemen is very far away, but they are saying the United States was able to intercept these three missiles from Yemen. And what about missiles coming against the temple of the Muslims in Jerusalem? Because they can use another, another excuse saying, oh, these, these missiles were fired from such and such country. And they will say this was done by themselves. They will blame it on the other team, even as they are blaming Gaza for the destruction of, of the hospital in Gaza. This paper, it says, Jerusalem is sacred place for Jewish, Muslims, and Christians. This is the United States talking. And this paper says, Israel eyes normalization with Mauritania, Indonesia, to expand the Abraham Accords. So before anything happens, they want the Arab nations to make peace with Israel. That's the plan. And this paper says, Benjamin Netanyahu's painful American tour. What did they do? In September, the Prime Minister of Israel and the President of the United States met together in New York. And what did they talk about? They talked about the war, the religious war that was going to take place. They were organizing, they were planning it. And this is a planification for the king of the north, for the papal power. This paper says Israel, Saudi Arabia, normalization deal in reach, Netanyahu tells Biden. So what they were talking about, they were talking about Saudi Arabia signing the Abraham Accord with Israel. And they want every Arab nation to follow in the steps. And then this paper says, Biden cancels visit to Jordan after hospital explosion in Gaza. It's interesting because this is happening right now. So President, President Biden cancels visit to Jordan after hospital explosion in Gaza. He had a plan to visit Jordan, and we will see that Jordan is also in the prophecy of Daniel chapter 11. But he canceled his trip to Jordan. He only visited Israel. And why? This paper says in Tel Aviv, Biden pins blame for Gaza hospital blast on the other team. He says, in a major boost for Jerusalem, United States President Joe Biden on Wednesday backed Israel's assertion that a deadly blast at a Gaza hospital the night before was the result of a misfired rocket by Palestinian terrorists as he arrived in Israel for an unprecedented wartime visit by a United States president. So he says he canceled his trip to Jordan because of the, of the Gaza hospital blast. And he blames the, 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 the Muslims for destroying their own hospital. It's interesting. And this paper, they are hugging each other, but it says Israel, Gaza. Biden clinches deal with Egypt to allow aid. So Biden wants aid to come into Gaza, but he is also uh, he is also backing Israel because of, of the war taking place. And this paper says aid delivery waits to enter Gaza from Egypt at Rafa crossing. And it's interesting also the picture, the photograph that they use, the photograph of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. 
In Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, we read, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Talking about the king of the north, by peace shall destroy many. And this war is to bring global peace. They want all religions together, but in particular, they want the Arab nations to be in harmony with the, the nation of Israel. This paper says, Egypt's summit for peace, opportunity to, to change course of events in Gaza and to end the violence. And not only for Gaza, for the whole world. This paper, this is a summit that took place two days ago. It says, world leaders attend Cairo, this is Egypt, peace summit to de-escalate Israel Hamas war. So this is Arab nations, mostly Arab nations coming to together in a peace summit in Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt is an Islamic nation. And Egypt is in the prophecies, even as Jordan. And this is in regards to Jordan. It says, Daniel 11, verse 41, he shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. All these, all, all these are province, provinces of Jordan. What is Jordan? Jordan is a Muslim country. So Ammon is Amman, the capital of Jordan. Edom is southwestern Jordan, and Moab is southern Jordan. What is telling us? That this is an expansion of the king of the south in this region because Jordan is Islamic. Jordan major religion is Islam. And it's interesting because Jordan is the protector of Jerusalem Temple Mount of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Islamic Mosque. Jordan, the kingdom of Jordan is the protector of Al-Aqsa, the Temple Mount Mosque. And this paper says, Jordan sends memo of protest to Israel over Al-Aqsa settler incursions. This is Egypt. Egypt is also Muslim. And Egypt is also prophesied in Daniel chapter 11. It says, Daniel 11, verse 43, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. This is just to give an uh, a sample of the Arab nations that will be at his steps. Of whose steps? The king of the south, Islam. Egypt is Islamic. Libya is Islamic, this is North Africa, and we have also Ethiopia. So here is to represent that Islam will be spreading in Africa, North Africa, and even as it did in the Mi Middle East with Amman, Edom, and Moab, just to give uh, a sample of, of their nations that that that, comp uh, that form the king of the south. So we have Libya, and Libya is also Muslim. So this is the king of the south versus the king of the north. But the time of the end is coming. And the glorious promise to us Christians is the coming of our Lord Jesus, king of kings and lord of lords whose kingdom is not of this earth. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 44, we read, 
but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Be therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many, to destroy, to kill many. There will be persecution against God's people because God's people keep the commandments of God. Worship the Lord Jesus and worship on the Sabbath, on the day of rest. And this is a, a prophecy in Daniel chapter 11, verse 43, verse 40, 45. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. That's the, the, the term the, the Bible uses. He, the king of the north, shall plant his tabernacles on the glorious holy mountain. And it's not just one tabernacle, not just one temple, his tabernacles, because they are planning to build a tabernacle for the Jewish people and a tabernacle for the Roman Catholic religion, and also one for the Muslims, because they want to bring peace on the world. And this is a, a replica of the, of the Vatican in, in Africa. It's interesting because it's double in size to the one that they have in Italy, in Rome. And this is um, in Ivory Coast in Africa. So what, the, what, do, what are they uh, planning? They are planning to, to destroy mosques and to establish the tabernacles, to establish the tabernacles of the king of the north, they want to, to do away with the mosques. And they are already doing it. But before that, they want the Arab nations to join Israel in support of Israel and also in harmony with Israel. And they want to establish their tabernacles. The king of the north, the, Ro the Roman Catholic power, they want to establish their tabernacles. They have already done after, after the Pope visited the United Arab Emirates as, as, a, as a gift from the government and from Islam. They built a tabernacle for the Roman Catholic Church, a tabernacle for the Jewish nation, and one for the Muslims, three temple. And this paper says, it's interesting because it's only a few days ago, Abrahamic family house in Abu Dhabi, religious tolerance in United Arab Emirates serves national interest. What do they want? They want global peace. What do we need? We need the real peace that only God can give. And we want to sit in the kingdom of heaven. This paper says in Matthew, Ma Matthew chapter 8, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, we read, And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. So this is the true, the true kingdom of heaven, the religion of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. Remember, all nations were and are blessed by the faith of Abraham, by our Lord Jesus, who is descended from that genealogy. My brothers and sisters, we are indeed living in, in solemn times. We see the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We see that the Bible is its own interpreter, and we see the prophecies indeed coming to life. May God bless us as we continue to prepare for the kingdom of heaven. May God keep us strong in the faith as we continue to share present truth. May, may we continue to present and also to, to share the gospel. There is only salvation. There is salvation only through the Lord Jesus. May God help us and find us faithful. Let us pray. Our oh, Father in heaven, we thank you so much for present truth, for Bible prophecy. 
We thank you for protecting this message. We pray for your guidance, for your blessing. We pray for protection, dear Father. In the name that is above all names, in the name of your Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much and may God bless you. May God keep us alive and strong. May we continue to retain the faith of your Lord Jesus.